Uh, tonight, the Israeli response to Iran out front. Earlier, I spoke with Ido Aharoni, Israel's Consul General in New York, and I asked him for his reaction to Ahmadinejad's comments. Well, I think it's the wrong framing to look at it as, uh, you know, Iran versus Israel. Uh, this is a much larger issue. It's the, the world, it's the West versus Iran. Uh, I think that what bothers them, what really threatens them at the end of the day, is everything that we stand for, not necessarily the things that we do. And I say we, I mean the United States, Israel, the rest of the Western civilization. And they're being threatened by all the things that we cherish and that we value, uh, like freedom of speech and women's rights and so on and so forth. And this is really what bothers them. I think Israel is only the excuse. When, when he was very clear to say several times, we don't take seriously, obviously he never uses the word Israel. He always uses the word Zionists. Um, the threats of the Zionists to attack uh, Iran's nuclear program. Um, should the world take those threats seriously? Because there is a lot of talk about whether the talk out of Prime Minister Netanyahu is more bluster and that he could only do it if the United States was there. Is there some truth to that? Look, there is no question. There are 193 members at the United Nations. There's only one member, Iran, that is openly calling for the destruction of another member, Israel. There's only one member of the United Nations that is openly denying the Holocaust. There's only one member of the United Nations that is constantly, habitually instigating violence all over the world, from Latin America through North Africa, all the way to Central Asia, and certainly in the Middle East. Uh, for all those reasons and many more, the world simply cannot and should not tolerate the very notion of Iran becoming nuclear. Do you ever feel conflicted um, when, when you look at Iran? It has a Jewish member of parliament. There's been a, a series on the Holocaust, television series that aired in Iran. There is a small Jewish community there. Do you ever feel conflicted at all in that sometimes their actions in, the, in that way don't appear to be anti-Jewish? Well, I don't think the world has an issue with the Iranian people. I think the world has an issue with the ongoing uh, threat posed by the Iranian leadership. I think what they're doing is irresponsible and reckless in the first place uh, for their own people and for their own good. Uh, the question of uh, whether we can trust the Iranians, um, I, why should we take the risk? Uh, we've seen this before. Uh, they mean what they say and they say what they mean. And they're behind a very long uh, string of attacks against Israeli and Jewish targets all over the world. Mm -hmm. Only recently in Bulgaria. Before that, uh, you know, we, we had to deal with numerous attempts to carry out attacks against Israeli and Jewish targets uh, in recent years. When you say they mean what they say and they say what they mean, obviously you're referring to, to the terror attacks. But another thing we just heard uh, President Ahmadinejad say is everyone knows Iran is not seeking a nuclear bomb or nuclear weapon. He says it again and again and again. And the question, however large or small it may be, over whether that is true, is why at least the United States hasn't taken more action. Well, I think but Israel knows? Well, I think that it's not, uh, you know, it's not by Israel. I mean, you have to look at the reports compiled by the international community. Uh, the most recent report actually admitted to the fact that uh, Iran has been lying all those years, and they are indeed uh, attempting to achieve military nuclear capabilities. Now, it's let the me IAEA remind, report. Exactly. Let me remind our viewers that once Iran becomes nuclear, they do not only enter the so-called zone of immunity, but they will spark immediately a regional nuclear arms race. And we may end up uh, with terrorist organizations with access to nuclear devices. This will ultimately change the way we live. This will ultimately change the way we travel. This would ultimately change the way we do business. And we have to think about that. Nuclear Iran will change everything in a very fundamental way. Do you feel that the United States understands that? I mean, there's, there's something like the tough statement we heard out of the National Security Council, but then there's the fact that the U.S. has so far declined to act, uh, that clearly Prime Minister Netanyahu has been frustrated by some of that appearing reticence uh, on the part, at least, of, of the President of the United States. Well, certainly, you know, I have no desire to enter this uh, political minefield, especially when you're in the midst of this and national, it is a minefield, you know. <laughs> national election season. I can just say, you know, very broadly mm -hmm. that we've been working very closely with this administration on this issue and many other issues. The level and the scope of the cooperation between the two security establishments 
is unprecedented. And, um, and sometimes among friends, you can have disagreements, as we've had with the U.S. We've heard about some of them. They've been very loud and very angry. You know, but uh, it's, it's perfectly understandable and legitimate. Uh, but uh, by and large, the United States is Israel's best friend, best ally, and, uh, and we'd like it to stay that way.